Oh, <laughs> this is the first TBR video with my new shelves in my new house. This is so fun. Hello my sweet friends, welcome back to another TBR jar chooses my reads. And guys, we have a brand new TBR jar, which is so fun. If you guys keep up with my vlogs, you would have seen Destiny sent me the most beautiful package and she had a TBR jar made for me with my name on it, but it broke in transit and I tried to glue it back together, it just didn't work. And then literally like a week after that, I got a package. So the person that sent this probably didn't know that I had just received one from Destiny, but like a week later, Later, I got a package from one of you guys and in there was a blind date with a book and a TBR jar and it has my name on it it says Rachel's TBR jar so I feel like that was just meant to be so we do have a little upgrade to the TBR jar I mean the prompts inside are still the same but I'm so excited this feels so like professional has my name on it you know but we have our trusty tbr cart here we have our jar i guess that's all we really need what am i in the mood for this month i don't think i'm in the biggest romance mood but in saying that i do like having a bit of a romance like palette cleanser in terms of books that i'm like really hoping i can fit into this tbr i really want to continue the boys of tommen series by chloe walsh i also really want to read one dark window honestly there's a lot on here that i'd be really excited to read Paper Princess is one that I've been thinking about a lot recently. I also would love to read some Ellen Hildebrand before it becomes winter here in Australia because we're going into the cooler months. So, I don't know. I'd, I'd be happy with a lot of these options. And April is my birthday month, so that does mean a birthday book haul coming your way sometime soon. And so I would love to just work on this TBR because I know that there's going to be some, some new books on the way, but that's for a later time. So let's get into my TBR for April. As usual, I'll pick out eight prompts. Starting out with prompt number one, cartoon cover. I feel like this means like people in a cartoon form. I feel like we have a lot of options, honestly, for this. I feel like one that sticks out to me is How to Love Your Neighbor. This is like a cute little cover. I don't think my Ellen Hildebrand, I wouldn't call them cartoon. They kind of look realistic. Oh, we have so many options, honestly. What do I feel like? I'm gonna go with a romance for this, I think. There's almost too many options. You know what? I think I'm gonna go with Funny Feelings. I would say this is like a cartoon cover, like an illustrated cover. I don't really know a lot about this I feel like it was popular a little while ago but I only got my hands on it a couple months ago and I've just heard really good things about it. Farley Jones is a loud, chaotic, and hilariously clever stand-up comedian on the way to stardom. The only thing she loves more than the rush of telling jokes in front of a revved up audience is her hot older manager, Maya. Keeping her feelings hidden from him is agony, but Maya has been Farley's closest and most treasured friend. Friends to lovers, then? Not to mention vital to the trajectory of her career. She can't risk ruining their relationship by telling him how she truly feels. It says he's really grumpy. Single dad, it sounds like as well, because he as a daughter forces the pair to fake date this is full of tropes fake dating friends to lovers workplace romance single dad grumpy sunshine like i feel like it's just actually packed full of tropes and it's quite a short and sweet little thing as well like just under 300 pages which is gorgeous so that might be a good little palette cleanser between longer like fantasy type books but i guess we'll see prompt number two Use a random number generator to pick a book blindly. Okay, I'm gonna count how many are front facing. There are a couple around the back. I'm just gonna, for the sake of this, do the ones that are at the front here, and then I'll get a random number generator to pick which number. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 18, 19, 9, 30, 31, 32, 38, 39, 40. Exactly. Hey Siri, pick a number between 1 and 40. It's 37. 37, 40, 38, what? 40, 39, 38, 37. Why can I not count? What is going on here? Oh my gosh, I can't get it out. Okay, this is a very interesting pick. This was sent to me in a little like PR package from Penguin. So I th I don't know, is this out yet? Let's have a little looky where the dark stands still. I don't know a single thing about this book. Okay, it looks like it's out now. Oh, is it YA? Gorgeous. Okay, so I think this was sent to me before it came out, but it is out now. A sweeping gothic fairy tale. Romance for fans of Belladonna. Stunning. And Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I haven't read Gallant, but I love V.E. Schwab. Raised in a small village near the Spiritwood, 
Lizka Radost, sorry about my pronunciation if that's incorrect, knows that magic is monstrous. After Lizka unleashes her own powers with devastating consequences, she is caught by the demon warden of the wood, the Lezki, who offers her a bargain. Oh my gosh, I was literally looking at this in the bookstore the other day and I didn't even... I didn't make the connection. One year of servitude in exchange for a wish. Oh my gosh, I was literally book shopping the other day in Dimmix and I think I might have even taken a photo of this book because I didn't make the connection. Uh, yeah, correct. I took a photo of it to like add to my wish list. Oh, it's not even showing you, is it? Yeah, I took a photo so that I could come home and add it to my wish list because I was like, oh wow, I like read the back of it and it sounded so interesting. I have it on my shelf, I do. Sometimes when I have the art copies, it doesn't have the same cover and I get confused. But I remember reading the back of this and it looked like it would be similar vibes to Belladonna and that sounds right up my alley. I'm so excited. I can't believe I didn't make the connection that I already owned this. I'm so glad I didn't buy it. That would have been very silly of me. Wow, okay, that's a great addition to the TBR. I'm so excited about that. Moving on to prompt number three. A book that you regret buying. Ugh. Okay, what do I regret? buying you know what <laughs> i'm gonna go with maybe meant to be by kl walter only because i read the summer of broken rules and i liked it i thought it was fun but i wasn't obsessed with it i had really high expectations for it and it didn't quite meet those expectations but it was good it was fun and then i read is it Meet Me at Midnight? What Happens After Midnight, sorry. Which is another book by her, and I did not really enjoy that. It was very average to me. Like, it was like, ugh, it's fine, but I was like glad to finish it when I finish it. You know when you're reading and you're like, I kind of can't wait for this to be over? That was how I felt about that book. But I bought that book and this book around the same time, and so I've kind of been putting this one off because I was like, I haven't really like loved anything that she's written. I shouldn't have just like bought all of her books without like knowing if I even really liked the author, you know? But I typically really love YA romance, so I just assumed I would really like it. But yeah, I've been putting this one off because I'm like, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna like it, but I could be wrong. Like this could be my favorite out of all of them. Is this her newest release potentially? I could be wrong with that, but I think it might be her newest release. But I think this follows like two like couples almost. It says, if Charlie and Sage are meant to be, why can't Sage stop kissing Charlie's brother? And why can't Charlie stop thinking about kissing the new boy at school? So I think everyone wants Sage and Charlie to like, everyone thinks they would be the perfect couple, but Sage and Charlie are both like in love with someone else. So it follows these two characters, but other love interests, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. I do really want to get it off my TBR because I feel like every time I see it on there, I'm like, oh, I don't really want to read that. I should just like get it over and done with and like read it. So you know what? Maybe it'll be a blessing in disguise to either read it and maybe love it way more than I'm expecting to, or read it and at least get it off my TBR cart and then I don't have to be haunted by it every time I look at my TBR cart, you know? But if I had to guess, I don't think I'm gonna like love it. So I kind of regret buying it, but it's not, it's not a huge regret, you know? I could love it, you never know. Moving on to prompt number four, a person on the cover. I have a lot of options for this as well. I don't want to pick a romance because I've already got two romances on here. So I kind of want to pick something else. Ooh, yeah, gorgeous. We have One Dark Window, which I have been itching to pick up because obviously so many people talk about it. I still have the price tag on it. I feel like you guys will be upset with me if I don't peel that off right now. But we have One Dark Window. We have a little person on the cover right there. I'm really excited to read this. I've heard a lot of people talk about it. I still don't really know that much about it. Oh, how do you even say her name? Elspeth? But I feel like this is very like vibey, like kind of dark gothic vibes. And what is it? There's like a, a monster that... Is it like, is in her head? I should not be explaining this. Like, I feel like there are so many better explanations out there. But I know that this is a fantasy, is it like a romanticy? I know there's romance in it, but I don't know if it's like romanticy or if it's just like fantasy with romance, but I'm pretty sure it's adult fantasy romance. A lot of people love it. I've heard great things about it. It's a duology, so I'm not like getting invested in a huge series, which is nice, but I'm excited. I've been wanting to pick this up for a really long time, so hopefully April will be my month. Prompt number five, <gasps> make Instagram blindly pick. Hmm. Okay, I'll put up a little poll. So let's do, I'm just gonna pick a few that like sound good to me. So let's do the, maybe we'll do four. We'll do Iron King, I reckon Thieves Gambit sounds really good. So I want to read that. Maybe we'll do Saving Six. Is this the next one? Is this book three? Yes. 
Saving six and hmm, maybe we'll do Rush. I'm pretty sure this is the ARC copy, but the normal cover of it does look quite similar to this. And I'm pretty sure this is an adult F1 romance. I know it's like car racing, I think. I am not sure if I'm going to like this. I feel like it could be a bit spicy for my liking, but I could be wrong. Just based on what I've heard people say, I'm not sure if it's up my alley, but I am intrigued. So let's pop this one in there. So we have The Iron King, Thieves Gambit, Saving Six, and Rush. Let's take a little photo. If you want to be a part of little like random polls and stuff like this, let's take the price tag off this one. You can follow me on my bookstagram because that's where I do them all. I'll have it on the screen for you guys. Okay, so this is what it looks like, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to color over the actual cover of it so you can't tell what the book actually is. I know Bestie Sarah did this a while ago and kind of like gave me this idea. I'm definitely getting my inspo from her. Thank you, Bestie Sarah. Because the prompt said, make Instagram blindly pick. So I can't actually let you guys see what it actually is, you know? Like that would ruin the, the blindly kind of situation there. Should I do emojis just to give you guys a bit of a hint? Oh, why not? This is so fun. I should do like a video where you guys blindly pick my reads or something. Kind of like this. Okay, so the Iron King will do a crown emoji and like a leaf because there's like leaves on the cover. For Thieves Gambit, we'll do, I feel like there's like a ninja emoji. And then I don't know what else to put on there. The cover just has a lot of like lasers. Maybe I'll just do this little red siren type thing because it's like a red light. I'm really taking some creative license with this. Saving six. Is there a rugby player? I wonder if you guys will know straight away. And then there's like a flower on the cover, a yellow flower. So maybe I'll just do the little yellow flower emoji. And then for Rush, I'll do a car. And there's like palm trees on the front of the book. So maybe I'll do a little palm tree. This is so fun. I really don't even know which one I want you guys to pick. I really do want to read Saving Six, but all of the other options on there, I'm like, pretty happy with anyway. Which book should I add to my TBR? Okay, we have the poll. I'm gonna post it and I'm gonna do a few more prompts and then at the end we'll come back to this one and see what's winning in the next like couple minutes, like five, 10 minutes. So not long to vote, but hopefully we'll have a winner. Moving on to prompt number six. One word title. Okay, we could do Perfect-ish. We could do Skyward. We could do... A lot of them are like the something. So we can't really do that because obviously that's more than one word. Or we could do Flower Heart. So I think our options are Perfect-ish, Skyward, or Flower Heart. I think I either want to do Skyward or Flower Heart. I really don't know which... I want to do out of these two. Very different vibes. Skyward is by Brandon Sanderson and it is YA sci-fi and Flower Heart is YA fantasy. I'm really intrigued by this. I think I'm going to do Flower Heart because I think I want to prioritize reading Miss Bourne first before I read Skyward. So let's do Flower Heart. A little while ago I asked for recommendations for like books that included a lot of talk about flowers because I really like reading about it. I don't know why. I just find it really fascinating and really beautiful. And I had some recommendations for Flower Heart. And so I just went and bought it. I didn't know really much about it. I know that there's a girl that has magic and I think she might have to heal someone and she has to like do some things to be able to do that. Oh, her father. She's trying to heal her father. I'm not sure if this is like middle grade or if it's more of like YA. I guess we'll see when we read it. I haven't heard any reviews about it, so I don't really know what to expect, but that's kind of fun because I'm kind of going in blind. And I think there's some romance in that one as well because on the front it says a power she can't control, a curse she can't undo, a boy she can't forget. Honestly, sounds good to me. Prompt number seven. A book with a name in the title. So I'm assuming like someone's name in the title. Do we have anything? The Hotel Nantucket, could that be like a name? Because is that the name of the hotel? The Hotel Nantucket? Am I making that up? All in Monte Carlo is the name of a place. I only have songs. Princess of Souls, but I hate them ever. I don't think Skyward is someone's name, but I could be wrong. But I don't think it is. Oh, Song of Achilles. Is Achilles like a person? I only have like two books back here and they're not, they don't fit that. Is Achilles a person? How do you even say this? Peleus' golden boy Achilles befriends the shamed prince. Is this the month that I read Song of Achilles? Okay, fine, 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 fine. 
you guys always make fun of me for skipping over this when I'm doing my TBRs. You're always like, Rachel, you could have picked Song of Achilles for this. You could have picked Song of Achilles for this. You could have... Blah, blah, blah. When are you going to read Song of Achilles? Maybe now. Maybe April. For all of you out there who want me to read this, hopefully this will be your month if I can convince myself to pick it up. The reason why I'm like hesitant toward this is like Greek mythology just does not sound interesting to me. Obviously I could love it. I really could. But the concept of this book just does not interest me. I know that this is like the OG book talker book. I'm shocked that I haven't read it yet. So many people love it. I know people have like tattoos for this book. Like it's one of those books that just people are obsessed with. It just, it doesn't like sound good to me based on concept. That doesn't mean I won't enjoy it. It's just the reason why I've put it off. So you know what? Why not? You know what I mean? Like why not? Let's read it. Let's put it on the TBR for April. Watch me get to the end of April and not read it. Like I did with Babel last month. Was Babel on my TBR for March? Yes. Have I read it? No. Maybe I'll read Babel in April. Maybe I'll just knock out all of the ones that have been intimidating me. Prompt number eight. A book with a white cover. Oh, okay. I think I'm just gonna go with this one straight away because this is one that I've been hoping to read for a while and it's just it was right in front of me You know what I mean? Let's do it. This is Paper Princess by Erin Watt. It's the Royals book one I've heard really good things about this. I think it's YA fantasy. Is it? Oh, is it not? Wait, why did I think it was like actual like royal princess like living in kingdoms fairy tale vibes? It says on the back, from strip clubs to truck shops to southern coast mansions and prep schools, one girl tries to stay true to herself. So it's not giving fairy tale. I actually have no idea what this is about. I just added it to my TBR because I've heard so many people talk about it and so many people love it. I think a lot of people read this when they were like a lot younger, but I love a YA book. I can't help myself. It says Ella Harper is a survivor, a pragmatic op. She spent her whole life moving from town to town with her flighty mother, struggling to make ends meet and believing that someday she'll climb out of the gutter. After her mother's death, Ella is truly alone. Until Callum Royal appears, plucking Ella out of poverty and tossing her into his posh mansion among his five sons who all hate her. Each royal boy is more magnetic than the last, but none as captivating as Reed Royal, the boy who is determined to send her back to the slum she came from. This sounds so good. Oh, so it's like rich people drama, but like she's from a really difficult background, like struggling to make ends meet, gets taken out of that, put in a mansion with five boys that all hate her, but what's the bet? At least one of them will fall in love with her. I'm assuming Reed. Hopefully more than one will fall in love with her. That will would be kind of fun. It's kind of giving like inheritance games, but like not as much mystery, but like the premise where she gets taken out of like a really, like struggling to make ends meet in the inheritance games and she gets put in this mansion with all of these rich people who don't like her. It's kind of giving the same premise, but obviously a very different plot, like past that initial premise. Oh my gosh, like I'm excited. I really thought this was about princes and princesses and kings and queens and stuff. So obviously I was wrong, I was wrong. This sounds so good. I'm excited. I love rich people drama. Okay, I've waited a little bit longer. I'm gonna check where the poll result is at this point. Obviously, I have to go with the book that's winning right now. And that is... Iron King. Iron King is sitting at 35%, followed closely by Saving Six at 30%. This is the book in second place. Honestly, if I can, like if I have the time, I would love to pick up this book in April, but obviously this is the book that's gonna go on my official TBR, which I'm still very excited about. I know that this is the start of quite a long series. When I picked this up in one of my vlogs, like a, a month or two ago, I hauled it and a lot of you guys commented saying that you read this when you were a little bit younger and loved it. So I'm excited. I don't know exactly what's gonna happen in this book. It says Megan's little brother goes missing and she's trying to find out the truth. She's the secret daughter of a mythical fairy king and a pawn in a deadly war. Like it just sounds really good. It sounds like a classic YA fantasy and that sounds gorgeous to me. So I'm very excited about this. But let me just do a quick little reorganization and we'll do a little recap of the books that I have on my TBR for April. So the eight books that I'm hoping I'll be able to read in April are Funny Feelings, Where the Dark Stands Still, Maybe Meant to Be, One Dark Window, Flower Heart, The Song of Achilles, Paper Princess, and lastly, The Iron King. I am honestly so excited about this TBR. I don't think I've been this excited for 
the books on my TBR in quite a while. Like I feel like there's so many good options. We have a mix of romance, fantasy, we have a mix of YA and adult. Like it just looks really good. So I'm excited. Hopefully I'll get through all of these. Do I ever get through a whole TBR? No, never. And this year I feel like I've not been great at reading for my TBR. So hopefully we'll do better in April, but no promises. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I love you all so, so much. And I will see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye.